And we are live. Welcome everyone to God Dreams, the show where we help you share your unique gifts with the world so you too can get paid online. My name is Michael Mataluni, and joining me today is Ted McGrath, the creator of Got Dreams and Message to Millions. Uh, he's going to be here in just a few moments, but I wanted to go ahead and get started and let you guys know how much amazing stuff we got down, coming down the pike. We've got a new event that we're going to be launching next week on January the 18th, which just happens to be my birthday. We're going to be doing a live three-day event to help you identify your message, build your story, understand how to package that story into your unique product. And then we're going to show you how to market it and get your vision, get your idea, get yourself out in front of millions of people. So if you are joining us for the first time, make sure you click the subscribe button. If you're here on YouTube, uh, we go live often. We go live every Thursday here on YouTube. So you can also click that bell so that you can get notified anytime we do a live stream. We're also coming to you live in our private Facebook group, in our membership group. Uh, so if you're new to Ted McGrath Brands, uh, welcome. And we've got some amazing stuff coming down the pike for you. Um, you can also take a look down below in the description. We've got a ton of free gifts if you're joining us today on YouTube. So if you're somebody who wants to launch mini courses, if you are somebody who wants to create um, your vision and get it out to the world, all you got to do is click on one of those free links and you can get it started right now. We've got my cat behind me uh, joining us today. We're not going to be uh, hanging out too much with her. We are going to be joined by Ted McGrath here in just a few moments. But I wanted to let you guys know, if you have questions, we're going to be answering those questions live for you here today. So whether you're in the private membership group, if you are joining us today on YouTube, make sure you click on uh, the comment section and let us know. So if you're just joining us today, let us know where you're from. Uh, let us know how you found Ted McGrath and just go ahead and put that in the comments and um, we'll address any questions that you have uh, as soon as Ted joins us. Um, so super excited to get started today. If, um, if you are brand new to this, um, what we really do with both Got Dreams and Message to Millions is A, if you're an artist, uh, if you're somebody who is looking to figure out how you can get your art into the world and reach millions, we've been doing this for 10 years now. And one of the things that Ted McGrath is so passionate about is helping artists, helping entrepreneurs. If you're a speaker, if you are somebody who is looking to launch your online business, uh, you are in the right place because this is exactly what we've been doing. Uh, and Got Dreams platform is something that we have been creating and we're creating it on the blockchain, uh, on Web 3.0 in order to ensure that we are future proof and we're going to teach you how to do those things as well. But if you're brand new to online marketing, if you're brand new to sharing your message or your vision online or you want to build an online business, you are in the right place. And we're going to be getting started here in just a few moments. Uh, Ted will be joining us. But if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section. Say hello. Tell us where you're from. Uh, let's see. We've got Elaine. Uh, hello, Ted. Welcome, Elaine. It's great to have you. We've got DNA Influencer. Cheers. Uh, we need health to get what we want in life, and probably we need to be healthier and enjoy what we've got. Gratitude is so important uh, in this space because we have to make sure that we are appreciating where we've come uh, and where we're going. Uh, we've also got John here from Fort Lauderdale. Found Ted on Facebook. Welcome, John. It's great to have you. And uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ted McGrath. Welcome, Ted. Hello. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, so we were just talking about our, our event that we've got coming up. We've got an amazing new event that we're going to be launching on January the 18th. It's going to be a three-day live event on the 18th, the 19th, and the 21st. Uh, so, Ted, can you kind of give us some uh, vision or context for what, uh, why you decided to launch this event? Yeah, so it's just a, it's a message to millions challenge that we're doing. Um, you know, we used to do launches all the time, like five, six years ago, and we got away from doing that. And we figured this would be something that would be fun to, uh, to do and do a little bit of challenge and, and have good you know, good time with our audience and give you guys some good content and, and make it fun. So that's basically what we're doing. 
That's awesome. And I think one of the most important things for folks to remember is this is results based. So the point of the event is for you to come each day, take what you've learned, get out there and put it into action and come back the next day uh, and build on that momentum. And a lot of folks who are in this position of launching an on uh, online business struggle with getting traction. They struggle with jumpstarting their business. So we're going to be walking you through step by step how to jumpstart your business. And I think one of the biggest things for folks is, you know, 90% of it is showing up, showing up online. Um, Ted, when you think of people who are interested in coming to this event, uh, what's, what do you think the price is for folks who uh, don't show? Or like, why is it important that people actually show up live to this event? Uh, yeah, because we don't, you know, we don't go live that much in terms of content. Uh, you know, we do it once a week here um, inter and we give, you know, content in various different areas. But um, we typically don't go live where we do it for like three consecutive days or three out of four days. And we don't do it normally sequentially on like how to build a business. So, um, this is pretty sequential on like from, you know, what's your story to what's your message to what's your program. And I'm going to be walking you through and giving you content pretty sequentially, um, every single day. So, you know, I would suggest just coming. It's fun. Um, it's a great community of people to be there with. Um, and then you also get the most relevant up-to-date data because, you know, things are changing a lot in business today. Uh, things are changing a lot online. So you get the most relevant up-to-date data on, on, you know, what we're doing in our business, what's working, what's not working. Um, and what are the things that are still timeless that you need to implement in your business, which is message and story and so forth and so on. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to share real quick the actual event. So on day one, which is January 18th, we're going to be doing the find your life story and message. So we're going to be talking about what is hidden within your life experience that you can craft into an amazing story to inspire uh, and to change the lives of millions. We're also going to be going through the Ted's proven method for discovery and refining your life story and message on day two, we're going to help you take that message and package it so that you can price and position your offer for other folks um, and really start to get the traction that you're looking for. And then day three, which is Friday, January 21st, we're going to show you how to take your message, your packaged product, your position and your priced offer. And we're going to teach you how to get that out into the world. Um, this is really exciting stuff because, you know, we've been, Ted's been doing this for a long time and you can see all the people who have had success with it, but we haven't done it a lot for specifically, you know, folks in this Got Dreams community. So this is your opportunity to really take this uh, and make it special and make it your own. So let me go ahead and stop sharing screen here. Uh, Ted, so let's talk a little bit about, I know that you're extremely passionate about web 3.0, the business world is changing, life is changing. And a lot of folks are caught up in current events. They're caught up on the things that are happening in daily life, but that shouldn't be stopping us from really building our businesses because what, you know, we talk about, uh, when was the best place? When was the best time to plant a tree? It was 10 years ago. When's the next right. best time it's now. Right. So, so can you give folks some context as to maybe, you know, why this is so valuable to get started now and, uh, and why they should take action? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I think, you know, the digital world right now online is, uh, it's changing, you know, um, pretty rapidly. And, um, um, I think that there's, there's still a huge opportunity to be online with what you're doing in your business. Um, and I think that, you know, what's going on with, uh, digital assets or just digital currency or quote unquote, the metaverse, um, is kind of a, the, the new exploratory next phase of, uh, you know, uh, you know, building digital online businesses, um, you know, there's a lot of us who are in like what's called Web 2.0, which is building a uh, digital business, right? Um, and in the last two years, we've seen a tremendous amount of people um, move into the space of like, okay, you got to bring your business online and you need to market online and you need to consider doing content online, right? These were things that were unheard of for regular businesses um, in the last couple of years. Like these were not things prior to the COVID hitting that regular businesses were doing. Regular businesses weren't thinking about content online. Regular businesses were pretty much still thinking about websites. 
Um, and businesses like ours, where it is about content marketing, it is about digital products, and it is about selling your advice. You know, we've obviously been thinking about this for the last nine, 10 years. So it's not a new thing to us, but I think to the most, most of the world, it's still kind of relatively new. And in the same breath, it's, it's to some degree outdated um, um, because um, the online space is more competitive and it is more competitive to get market share. So I think we're kind of going through this transition in the next uh, couple of years of like, where are we going? Like we're in between this web 2.0 digital marketing, digital business world and this whole new world of like digital money. And I think the world's still figuring it out. And um, and I think the reason the world's still figuring it out is because the environment, I don't think, has ever changed this drastically in our lifetime. Right. So when you have the environment changing so drastically within companies, uh, when you have the money supply changing so drastically in the economy um, and you have uh, people still trying to figure out, including the Fed, uh, what are they going to do? Are they going to, you know, what is the true inflation rate? Uh, is the Fed going to raise interest rates, which we found out yesterday doesn't seem like they're going to. But, you know, the, the, the stock market was on edge, you know, waiting to hear the news yesterday. The, the crypto world was on edge. People were thinking there's going to be a crash if the Fed announces the wrong thing. So you got this whole world going on of like, you know, a business of like the stock market, which is inflated and, and money's been pumped into it. It's not even real, um, is on edge. Um, and uh, the crypto world's on edge to see what's going to happen. And then, you know, you have this regular kind of web 2.0 world of us who we're all building businesses. And to some degree, we're on edge because we're like, okay, well, our, play, our price is going to go up more. Is it going to be more expensive to get, you know, to buy traffic? Is it going to get more competitive online? So I think, you know, we're, we're kind of in this, this like not a holding period, but like, what are we right now? Are we right. like a web 2.0 business? It's still going to be a digital business. Are we a business is going to move into accepting digital currency and then, you know, existing in the metaverse where everything's going to be virtual reality. I think people are still trying to figure it out. Um, so you're going to see a lot of exploratory stuff. I think over the next uh, couple of years, you see a lot of fortunes made and you're going to see a lot of businesses die um, and not just businesses in, in the, the brick and mortar world. I think you're just going to see a lot of new things spring up that, you know, you were, businesses like ours are going to have to adapt and adjust fast. Um, right. to, to, uh, to ride the wave. So I think it's an interesting and exciting time. Um, but I think it's also a very critical time that, you know, people make decisions and they, they get into trying new things and right. testing new things, um, and doing things new in your business to find out what's going to work for you in 2022. Um, and, uh, and there are things that are working. So I think there uh, on some, some element you need to be urgent and, um, you know, move with a necessity. Um, um, but in some elements, there's still exciting things going on that you can move with kind of inspiration and excitement. Well, I think you make such an important point here because a lot of folks are looking to where to invest their money and everyone's on edge and you don't know exactly what to be doing. And I think it's so important to be investing in yourself, to be investing in your own business, because that's something you have complete control over. And I think a lot of folks, they just don't know where to start. They don't know why their message is important or different or valid. And so many people are afraid to kind of get started. And I think that what doesn't change in the marketing world is people's psychology. What doesn't change is what moves people and what moves people are stories. People are always, you know, if you're, if you're a fan of Netflix, if you're a, somebody who loves to watch a great story on television, you know this, but are you incorporating that into your business? Are you showing people that you're different because you are engaging them in a way that helps them understand that you've got a valuable story and a valuable message? And that's really what we're going to be focusing on in this event. And Ted, this is something that you've been really focused on a while. You went from teaching on stages and speaking on other people's stages, and then you transitioned to online business and teleseminars, and then you've been focusing on podcasts and getting messages out there. And who knows what the next five or 10 years will bring with the metaverse and Web 3.0, but it's so critical to have the building blocks of a great business and understanding how important storytelling is and really creating something now so that you can be positioned for growth. How many folks out there, you know, missed the, the, the Bitcoin bandwagon or missed 
um, you know, the online marketing train when they if if they had the basic building blocks of their business and understood psychology and understood marketing, um, you know, people's psychology, what what they could do um, from a marketing perspective. I think it's so important. Yeah. And I think you also have to have like, you know, a decade viewpoint on your business and your investments and all of that. You know, I think that's something that's lacking um, uh, with, you know, with business owners. And it's something that's also lacking with uh, people that are investing. You know, um, I think that people get disappointed in businesses and things like that as they're trying to ride a trend for a couple of years, you know, um, and then when the trend doesn't pan out or doesn't continue, there's nothing sustainable to keep the business, you know, running and going, um, you know, investments too. I think there's a lot of people right now, um, you know, including, including me who were obviously disappointed what happened at the end of last year with, uh, with what happened with Bitcoin. Um, but you know, I also still made 60 something percent, um, from my Bitcoin investments in that year. And, you know, being involved since 2017 made 500%. So, you know, you have to look at things like you, everybody's got the high expectation, not everybody, but most people have a high, expect, high expectation of what things are going to do and when they don't do them um, and they don't have a plan to continue for the next year or two years or decade on that thing, they bail too early. And I think, you know, a business, you have to have a decade, two decade, three decade time horizon on what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, and then you got to find new ways to get that message or product or service out to the marketplace. In investments, you have to have a decade, two decade time horizon on what you're doing um, because you can't be in it for the month or the or, or two months or, um, you know, the bad news that hits over a 90 day period that throws you out of the game. You have to be in it for a longer time horizon. Um, and in a world today where I think it's just uh, uh, it's fast and it's moving and everybody wants things yesterday and you know, you're hearing about the fortune that this guy made and that guy made and hearing about the overnight success. Uh, what's portrayed is just not real um, to how the world operates. And um, and I think you need to have a real, real time horizon on what you're doing in terms of building your business and in terms of your money. Um, and if you do, if you have that, then you're going to weather the storms of the ups and the downs um, because you have a vision of the future of where you're going and you have a commitment, um, a solid kind of grounding in the things that you're doing versus kind of a fly by night thing. Right. And that's something that you've always taught is, you know, really understanding your, you know, why you're doing this, because if you don't have a passion, if you don't have a vision, it's very difficult to weather the day to day storms. Um, you know, what's, what's kind of your philosophy for weathering day to day storms? Um, you gotta have a lot of wealth, you know, you gotta grow up wealth and have reserves. Um, you know, we had a really horrible week this week. It cost me probably 50, 60 grand out of the reserves, um, of the business. Um, and you, you have to be able to weather stuff like that. Like, you know, uh, it's kind of like the, the, this first week of the new year, the world had COVID. Um, and it, you know, it, it's, it puts people in a position or situation where you had great plans for the new year. And all of a sudden your clients have COVID or your uh, employees have COVID or, you know, uh, people around your surrounding area have COVID and it throws off the plan of, you know, what you intended for the new year. Um, so you have to be able to weather stuff like that. Um, and in any given business or any given uh, investment that you are, uh, investing in, or if you're investing your time into a business, you're going to have times where things don't go right, you know? Um, and you just have to plan for that. Um, and it's going to happen at some time in any business. Um, you know, Elon Musk at the end of the year, you know, sold off, uh, billions of dollars of stock, right? Uh, he wasn't planning that the government might change the laws. Um, and all of a sudden they change the laws. So you have something in your environment coming in. The government could change the laws. The fed could change the interest rates. The, uh, you know, uh, the, the increase of advertising could go up. Uh, cryptocurrency might not hit 300%. It might hit 60% instead. So you really just have to plan for things like that um, and have enough of uh, a treasure chest, you know, of, um, of wealth and um, persistence and drive to be able to get through moments like that. Um, and when times are flying high, that's when you need to plan for things the most. My, my mentor always told me, he's like, 
the time you need to get a line of credit in your business is when you don't need it. And I never forgot that. So when I was doing really, really well and making a lot of money, I got lines of credit for my business, you know? And so um, those are the times that you need to think about it. I was telling a friend of that recently. He's like, why do I need a line of credit? I'm like, the time you need it is now. You're doing really well. Don't wait until something hits and there's a disaster. So, um, so just, you know, as you're going to build things, make sure you set aside money um, that you have there to weather any situation that comes up. And if you do, it's no fun, you know, when I have to write a $60,000 check um, that's not coming out of profits or, or um, uh, you know, income from the company. It's not a fun thing, but, um, you know, if you're, if you're able to do it, you do it because you've got to continue to run the business and continue to um, have that decade time horizon on what you're doing. You know, if you, if you lose 50% uh, in your investments in a month, um, like many of us did with Bitcoin, um, you got to be in a position to where like, okay, you don't have to sell out because you're on leverage and you made moves that were too aggressive that now you're out of the game. So in anything you do, what affords you to be aggressive is that you made smart, also conservative plays along the way. Right. And people forget that. Sometimes they just want to be aggressive and hit the home run. And sometimes that works for people. But if you look at the most successful people, they made their decisions for a decade, two decades, and they just stuck to it. And then, you know, you see the product now, they're like, hey, they're worth $100 million or they're worth a billion dollars. Um, but that doesn't come without, you know, extreme uh, risk in the face of making sure you have that treasure chest and you have that stable base to operate from. Right. And people don't see when they look at the success of others, they don't see all the storms those folks have weathered. They don't see the hard times and the pain and the frustration and the struggle. Um, you know, that's why it's so easy to get stuck in be watching other people and being jealous or envious rather than focusing on what you can do today. What is within your control? Uh, it reminds me a little bit of what you're talking about. Warren Buffett always said, be greedy when other people are fearful and be fearful when other people are greedy. Right. 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 <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's wisdom that's timeless in anybody who's been successful. You know, if you just listen to enough of it, you know, Elon Musk, they were four weeks or a couple weeks away from bankruptcy on Tesla, you know, um, you know, Elon Musk started a company and, and he made one hundred twenty million dollars in this sale from PayPal. And his plan was to put 60 million into Tesla and uh, and SpaceX. And he ended up putting all one hundred twenty million into it. And then he ended up borrowing money so they could live. Um, you know, none of these stories come without great uh, these great triumphs. None of them come without um, a huge amount of. Uh, perseverance through the tough times and a huge amount of risk taking. Um, but you have to decide what kind of risk taking you're willing to take. And, you know, it's inspirational when you see guys like this um, doing the things that they're doing. It's funny. I was reading my James Barber's helping me with my book, Got Dreams. It's coming out now. And he sent me a chapter yesterday and uh, he's like helping reword it. He's like, God, this is such powerful stuff. And uh, so I, I was reading through my own chapter and it was about like, you know, how I got strategic partners and I did my first million dollar launch. This is like six, seven years ago. Um, and I'm reading through it. I'm like, God, that's a, that's a really good principle right there. You know, you're inspiring like, yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm admiring <laughs> like the strategy and the ideas and what it took for me to get here. I'm like, God, that's a really good thing. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, well, I, you know, that group that I was a part of that I worked with to create these great million dollar launches like they Every Tuesday now, there's a whole bunch of people who've gotten back together um, and I'm, I'm going to participate in next Tuesdays and just be there consistently um, because there's all kinds of great ideas that come out of that and partnerships and relationships. And um, and those are the things that, you know, help you persevere and kind of succeed towards the future is, um, you know, we're doing this challenge with our friend Israel right now, you know, and who knows what's going to come of it. But we're trying something new. I got another guy, Jesse. Uh, that we're, we might try something new with as well. And, uh, you know, there's a software play that we might get involved with and I might take equity in the company and, and you know, start building out a software component of our business. I'm always trying new things, right? So despite what's going on, the foot's never off the gas. Um, there's always a trying of new things because if you don't test and try new things, you never know what's going to work. Um, even what we're doing with our Facebook groups now has been kind of exciting, you know? Uh, we've increased our engagement by 12, 13 percent, uh, well, by five, six hundred percent. But the group's grown by 12, 13 percent over the last month. Um, we're kind of working that out and we have engaged people. We have people who are interested. We have people who are buying our products from that group. 
but we haven't quite cracked the perfect system for it. So I was on the phone with the team the other day and I was like, okay, adjust this, adjust that. And I'm starting to dial in what's the perfect system. Um, and a lot of times the perfect system is a combination of what you're already doing combined with the thing that you're trying to innovate. Like when I launched online, most people don't know this. I was trying to compete in the marketplace with digital marketers and trying to be successful with $37 and $97 products. And one day I woke up and I go, that's not my model. That's not who I am for the last 20 years of my life. And at that time it was 13, 14 years of my life. I'm a salesperson. And so the way I made my funnel profitable was not through marketing. It was through sales. And most people think, well, doesn't marketing, yeah, marketing is right. an element of how we drive the traffic. But what really made us successful was a sales team on the phone selling the $2,000 and the $10,000 products. Um, and that's when we turned a corner and tripled the business and not even tripled, more than tripled it, right? And so it was using something that I already knew to implement in the game. Even this challenge that we're doing, you know, we'll make an offer at the challenge. I so badly want to have our sales team on the phone, you know, but we can't because we can't take our sales team off the regular business, but I know what's going to win long term. So I have a strategy to then still get them on the phone with our sales team. So all these things are like, you know, how do you take something that you kind of do best um, and integrate into what you're doing? Even the launch I did that was $1.35 million. We did 590,000 on that on the front end. Um, and 700 plus thousand came on the phone on the upsells. And so it, it and it was the least planned, least strategized thing in my business. It's like, great, I'll just show up and I'll do this and blah, 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 blah. And it was from an idea that I had from a friend of mine, Justin Livingston. Um, and I was just like, I'll try it. And I tried it. And it was it was, it was we spent the least amount of time on that. But if we hadn't spent the time on the marketing and perfecting that and getting the message and getting the videos that back end thing wouldn't have been successful. And the back end thing took me uh, like literally minutes to set up, you know, um, not minutes, but to write the copy and whatever, I would say hours of work right. where the front end took, you know, 50, 60, hundred hours of work to get it done. So it's often the thing that's going to make, make, make you the most profitable is that extra idea that helps you innovate to your strength. Um, because you take somebody else's idea, right? And this happens all the time in the marketplace. Like we're doing a challenge. That's not my idea. It's not my fucking idea, right? I, I've been hearing people talk about challenges all the time. I run into somebody who's doing it. I'm like, great, we'll do it. So it's not my idea. But the thing that I'm going to do on the back end of it is my idea, which is I'm going to, I have a way to get them on the phone with the sales team. Um, so innovation, like I, I believe comes from your two things. It comes from your, your strengths and your point of view. Um, and so take things that are working in the marketplace. Um, some of the best things that innovated in the world was like, you know, either like a circus Olay came from the circus, right. But they, they eliminated things. They got rid of animals and then they added this thing. So it came from something that was already existing, an idea, and they innovated it. Um, uh, you know, I always go back to the example of yellowtail wine. I don't think they're even in existence. Maybe they are still, but they, they innovated something where they're like, great, wine is so confusing and people feel stupid walking into a wine store. So we're just going to create a red and a white and we're going to do it for non-wine drinkers. So I, I feel like I teach kind of marketing for non-marketers, you know? Um, and, and that's, that's kind of how I've operated. Now you could look at it and go, I, I Mike, I think we're really, really, really good marketers together, right? Of what we built. We are because we figured out a way through all this. I mean, even look at our funnels last week, despite the fact that this week is a disaster, like we're 313% on one of the funnels, right? In, in, in a, in that's in, in that's on a 30 day return, right? Right. We were, too, we were on the other one, we were 200 and something percent. So if that doesn't give you a bullish sign to go, we're doing something right despite the times, um, then, you know, you, you were looking at wrong indicators, right? So I think you have to take things that you've kind of innovative and they might have worked because you innovated it. Um, but there's still underneath it, the general idea that works, which is the general idea that works is get traffic, get marketing. Um, and all these iterations of what we've done over the years, Mike, 
it's like it started on stages, but then it went to launches, which was a bigger stage online. And then it went to, okay, well, we're going to kind of have a stage 24, 7, 365, which is a funnel, right? You're still sending a message and you're still sending products, whether it's on a stage, whether it's through a launch, whether it's through a funnel, whether it's through a challenge, it's the same general principle. It's a different kind of trick to give people a new flavor to look at things to reach more of the masses. Right. And I think if you can just take your strengths and take your point of view and lay them on top of the new idea that is still founded on timeless principles, you can still win in any game that you're playing. I, I would encourage everybody to go back and l- listen to that last 10 seconds, like 20 times today. When this live stream is over, go back and listen to that because that is so critical. Understanding your point of view, what makes you different, what makes you special, what makes you interesting, and then what's already working out there in the world and what your strength is. And I think a lot of people spend a lot of time really focusing on their weaknesses. They're like, focus so much energy on fixing their weaknesses, fixing their weaknesses rather than leveraging their strengths. And it can be, it can kind of put you in like a, a you know, you can start to like feel like you're just pounding your head against the wall yeah. because you're not focusing on those things. Yeah. And, and, and that's right, Mike. And also last thing, and we'll get off here is, is not to abandon the, like we're, we're, we're like rebirthing message to millions this week, not because we don't sell it every day, but the interface with the customer is on the phone about message to millions. It's not in the brand. And so we're kind of rebirthing that to go in all of our copy, right? It's like message to millions, message to millions, message to millions, because that was the primary thing that created the success. So, um, and then sometimes you get away from things by testing, the, doing this thing and that thing. And all of a sudden you see your message start to shift into a thing versus a vision and a message. And we kind of, we, I don't want to say we made that mistake. I would say we morphed and then we got away from the general founding principle of what right. we're about. We're really about message to millions and we're not about uh, marketing. We're not about um, um, you know, just digital marketing as our main thing. And a lot of people see us that way, but we're really fundamentally about what is the message first? Um, and, and how is that message going to impact the world? And then how are you uniquely different in the marketplace? And if you were to look at your one innovation, of course, the marketing is what we teach as the vehicle, which is what I call the dream machine to get people there. But that's kind of a timeless thing, right? That you're going to rest on top of the idea that you're going to borrow from somebody like us and go, what's working, let's use their idea. But the, the, the innovation on top of that essentially is your message. And it's your program and that's your innovation, right? And so you have to kind of stay true to what your innovation is and and put it on top of this timeless thing that runs and go, okay, how do I stay true to my innovation and my message? And then go, okay, well, what, what are my skill sets to make my message get across? For some people, it's storytelling, um, which we teach, right? For some people, it's they're great at sales. And so for us, we build a sales team and that's what's going to get across. For some people, they're great at presentations and that's what's going to get it across with on the timeless machine that you're running. Um, for some people, they're who know they're great at engaging with their customers and creating really good content um, and, and engaging with their customers. There's kind of different things that you kind of gravitate towards on top of your innovation of your message and your program that you have to look at what is that thing within the context of your marketing dream machine. And I think when you find it, um, that's when you're going to succeed um, in the thing that you're doing. Um, and of course, you can't do it without an audience. So you've got to have that timeless machine that's constantly adapting and adjusting as the times change, you know, but the principles are still the same. You need a message. You need to get eyeballs. Um, it's just what is the tool and the way you're going to do it today? Hundred percent, and I highly encourage everybody to go check it out. We're going to be live on the eighteenth, nineteenth, and the twenty-first. It's going to be an opportunity for you to really clarify your message, then package your message into an offer that you're going to be able to sell, and then we're going to teach you how to get that offer out in front of eyeballs to ensure that 
you're building your successful business. But remember, point of view, uh, leveraging your strengths and modeling success, those things are going to give you the tools you need uh, to make this happen. For those of you who haven't uh, joined us here before, make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below if you are watching this on YouTube. Click the bell so you know whenever we go live. If you're in our private Facebook group, uh, we're so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you joined us. Big things coming up. Ted McGrath, it's always a pleasure, uh, and we'll see you uh, very soon. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Mike. Cheers. Bye -bye.